Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm going to speak to you from the prophetic David that I have for today, Matthew 6. That's prophetic words that we write in a specific time, like in December. Write down 365 words, 365 scriptures for the year ahead. If you want to know more about that, we have a course of three, four, five hours um, to help you facilitate that. But that is so that we can understand the good works that God has prepared for us in advance for us to walk in it and to help us in that. So, when we look at Matthew 5, 6, 7, quite a sermon from Jesus. And uh, if I must do a revision just very, very, very quickly from Matthew 5, we did a 12-week um, series on the Beatitudes about 10 years ago. But let me in uh, 10 minutes try and put some foundations with, with you. In uh, the sermon, when getting into this teaching, God lays a certain foundation, and He starts with the Beatitudes, which says, Blessed are those. And in this blessing, according to the Amplified, it means happy, fortunate, to be envied, to be envied by others, that they must even become jealous about you and think, how can you do that? How can you be happy? How can you be content? How can you be satisfied? How can you have this joy in your life? It's not logical. But God lays the foundation in this chapter, three chapters, to give a definition for you to understand what is happiness? What is it to be blessed by the Lord? Let's look at that nine points quickly. And if you can write down, that will be awesome. In verse 3, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Not blessed is, the, is poverty, but blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. What are we talking about? How can you be happy to be poor? This poor in the context has to do with in the place of honesty and humility, knowing that without God, I'm absolutely nothing. Blessed are you if you get that revelation that you are not deceived, thinking your life is okay without Christ. But if the Holy Spirit can bring you in such a place that you understand, I'm poor in spirit, I have nothing without Him, and I can come to the place of true honesty. There's an honesty that the devil can have. And when you are put into a corner, a guy in the courtroom that can be honest and say, okay, it was me. But with God, there's an honesty that goes with a humility that is found in a place of worship. That I'm honest before the throne of God, but I'm, come, I'm coming with humility. And when you humble yourself, God will lift you up. And God says, when you humble yourself and you are honest about your situation, I lift you up that the kingdom of heaven is yours. That I will give you my name, the name above all names. That through you authority can work. I will trust you with my name. I will trust you with my kingdom. But then you must come with humility and honesty in a place of worship. Now, these nine facets of the Beatitudes, actually, the one is a foundation, foundational for the next one. So, please, look at that and how you can build that into your life. Honesty, humility. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. You receive in your heart that what is from God. Number two, blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Not those who moan and groan. <clears throat> but this mourning... It's also not the morning and the evening. It has to do with a brokenness and a repentance. Many times in the Old Testament, when God did a major thing, the nation, there was a mourning for the sin. There was a repentance in the heart, a true sorry. But not just a sorry, a repentance and a brokenness. Brokenness before God is beautiful. Brokenness in the, is once again in the context of worship and love. 
because I love you, because I worship you, in that place there's a brokenness and a repentance. Blessed are you, happy, fortunate, to be envied. If that is happening in your life, that from that place of having the guts to be honest and humble before the Lord, you can come with that what you call true, true repentance with brokenness. It says they will be comforted. Comforted is not achsistoch, shame. Comforted has to do with restoration. You will be healed in your heart. You will, your relationships will be healed. God's comfort, God's grace will be there. Amen. Through his love, fear will be driven out. Through his peace, anxiety will be dealt with. Through his joy, discouragement will be gone. In Jesus' name. Blessed are you if you come with that brokenness and repentance. Number three. Blessed are the meek. For they will inherit the earth. Not blessed are the softies. The meek has to do with the teachable. Those who are flexible and teachable. I know all the prefects are writing down. Oh, what a blessing. Hallelujah. What are we saying? Blessed are the meek. My brother, my sister, you want to inherit earth. The first thing is not to go with your vision by faith. So many people, even in the name of the Lord, they go with their vision, but walking over people. One example that we always use, the man trusting God to open up a big grocery store in Brantford. Trusting God, and he's opening up the business, and he said, God bless me, God bless me. It's just going well, and it's everything, but there's a Portuguese market around the corner. And that man worked for 30 years with that business. Trusting God for the finance to send his kids to university. And just before he could do it, his business is kind of going down. Because around the corner, somebody is praising God that he opened up the business for them. And three families just go down. <sighs> business gone. Who stood with God. Ah, I think that's not the way to inherit the earth. Hello? The meek, the teachable, the flexible, to hear from God. And God says, open up the store, but don't sell this and this and that and that. And go and speak to your neighbor that are also following me. And say, I will not go into this and this and this, because I know this is your speciality. I bless you with your business as my brother. Uh, how many people did we find that? Uh, we will see that in the future, I believe. Uh, the more the church mature. Hello? And in that way, the church will inherit, inherit what God has for us. They had an interview with a, one Jew that's the CEO of a major company. And they asked him, why, how does the Jews get it right with their economy and with what they do? This small, small, small country, except for the fact of God's grace on them, to just be like this good with business and with a lot of strategies. And the man said, because we are not making profit for ourselves. When there's a breakthrough, when there's profit, it must be for a group of people. Where the group must benefit. That the people with you, they must make money. Make money, if I can say like that. They must also prosper. My brother, where you go, in inheriting the earth, is making a difference for a lot of people around you also. It's not for your enrichment. Make God bless you in that sense also. But always remember, the resources is a servant in your life. Money is the servant in your life. Don't you just go and work, work, so everything will work out before the end of the month. Get the attitude right before the Lord. Amen. Are you with me? So inheriting the earth in, is inheriting your destiny, the calling that God has for you here on earth. You will inherit it. If you are blessed by God to understand how to be flexible and teachable. And only the Holy Spirit can bring that teachable spirit if you trust him for but build the first foundations in your life and you will come into this place of being teachable the next one 
Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Sometimes we have a hunger and thirst to make our point, to justify ourselves, to say what we believe in, and we step by, walk by faith for that. Uh -uh. If you truly want to be blessed in this place where you can start to see success, the kingdom belongs to you from a place of honesty and humility. Restoration and healing came in your life because of true brokenness and repentance. You start to inherit your destiny. You try to be successful in your future because you are teachable and flexible. In this place, make sure you hunger for the word and you thirst after the Holy Spirit. Those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. Righteousness is only found through the word and the spirit. Hunger, you shall not live by every, by, from bread alone, but from every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Luke 4, 4. Amen? And thirst, I will give you the water when you will never thirst again. John 4, the living water. Happy are you, blessed are you, if you understand that what you really thirst for, what you really hunger is not for this acceptance or for those guys to say, yay, for, for this security, that your hunger is for the Word, that your thirst is for more of the Spirit. Through the Word and the Spirit, you will know the stature. Hunger and thirst for righteousness. You have no right, no right, except your right in Christ. And to be in Christ is through the Word and the Spirit. There's no other way. Amen? Blessed are you, if you understand that. Okay, next one. Blessed are the merciful, because they will be shown mercy. Merciful, that's achsistoch. No, not feeling sorry for someone in that sense. Mercy is God's practical help. Grace is God's enablement. Amazing enablement that saved a wretch like me. How can I be able? It's God's enablement because of myself. It's not, impo it's not possible. So that is grace. Grace is not just... Whew, I'm missing hell. I'm going to heaven. <laughs> Not at all. God's grace is his enablement. His mercy is his practical help. Go and see more into the original context, the perspective coming forth. God's practical help. Blessed are those who give practical help to others. Because they will receive practical help from God and from others. But sometimes we practically help others and we serve until we die. Because we haven't built in these foundations, first of all, these four points that I've just spoke about. Build that into your life so that the practical help coming through you to others is through the grace of God, through the power of the Holy Spirit, as you're working with God. Amen? Then you will not die in serving. But serving will not become a curse, but serving will be an honor towards the master. Amen. Do that in the context of building these foundations. Please, guys, God's practical help will be there. The next one. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Oh, God, give me a pure heart. It's not just clickety-click and there's a pure heart. No, <laughs> you work it. Your heart is forgiven. But not necessarily pure. You need to work through the Holy Spirit and the Word. Jesus washed his bride with the washing of the Word. Your heart must be washed clean. Hello? And the Spirit must work in you, creating me a clean heart. Put your laws in my heart and in my mind. Amen? God has said. So to come into that place of having a pure heart... For they will see God. There's a lot of people, they saw God. The devil can see God so much clearer than me and you. Hello. When he comes in here. When he goes with you to your job, the devil. When he goes into your relationship. Goes into the place where he sees you, ang you anxious or this. Or speak this. Or gossip about this. Or pointing the finger. That was only in the past. Never again, I know. But he, he can see that so clearly. And in that place, he can see where's Jesus and where you put Jesus in your life. 
he can also see, but not from a pure heart. What he sees and what you can see is totally different. Because what you can see is from a place of relationship, from a place of worship, from a place of intimacy that the devil never, 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 never can have. But as long as he can get you not to see God, and the strategy is let your heart just go all over the place. Double-heartedness, that guy must not even think that he can receive something from God. The word says, through the apostles. So my brother, my sister, we need to deal with our hearts. Amen. Build these foundations, one, two, three, four, five, in your life in such a way that your heart can be in a place where you give your life, your heart to God. You can give something that is of worth, that He created in you. Amen. Okay. So that they will see God. You can start to have the capacity to see where God is and what He says for your life. Number the next one. Is that seven? Now this is not number seven for those who write. Hey. Blessed are the peacemakers for they will be called children of God and in the right context sons of God. We are children of God with our needs. But when we grow up we become sons of God in the Son of God. When we grow up, we become sons in the Son of God, and we become the bride of Christ towards the bridegroom, Jesus Christ. Are you with me? In Christ, sons. With Christ, servants and friends, if we follow him, and the bride. Let it be so through his grace in Jesus' name. Peacemakers is not just for a... What is a skitstillstand? The shoot standing still. Ceasefire. I say, man, a ceasefire. Many times we go for a ceasefire. You know, you just, you don't deal with a conflict. We just flow with one another in the marriage. Or just this, or with that guy, you give a holy smile. Hey, how are you doing? Very fine. And you are oh, great. Good. But meanwhile, one mockery. There's no peacemaker there. Blessed are you if you understand the peace where Jesus said, My peace I give unto you, not as the world give, but my peace. And where this peace has to do with reconciliation, this is a relational peace with Christ. Where Christ as the Prince of Peace, that he is here. You called with a message of reconciliation, with a calling of restoration. 2 Corinthians 5, eh? That in that place, for you it's about what is Christ saying here and what type of restoration in relationship Christ wants to bring. That's a peacemaker. That's a peacemaker. They will be called the sons of God. That's a mature man. Immature is when you do your own thing. Mature is when you are dependent. I know in, we learn it other way around, but I understand that that is more a thing of you must take responsibility that you must be accountable for what you do. That's actually what we want to say. When we say you need to grow up and start to do your own thing. And not be so dependent. That means you must be accountable. You must be responsible. But about dependency. When you are very young in Christ, immature. Then many times you do your own thing and God's grace is there. But when you grow up in Christ, you become less independent. When you grow up in Christ, you become more dependent on God. May God help you. May God help me. That we will stand with stature because we understand how to bring peace as peacemakers, reconciliators in Christ. Hallelujah. Number eight. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Persecuted because of their stature. Blessed are you when you are persecuted because of your stature. Blessed are you when darkness feels threatened about your stature. Hello? But sometimes we feel, oh, these guys are coming against us because, but it's actually because of our foolishness of what we've done. Not ever more anymore in Jesus' name we proclaim. But when you stand in the name of Christ, there where you are, when you stand among your friends, guys there at the school, prefects, when you stand 
but you stand in the name of Christ, not to condemn others, not to think I'm holier than others. No, but because God has called you to have the guts to stand in the name of Jesus. You become a man. You become a woman. That's really from God. But when you get into a place, you must know your stature. There's one small example in the army. When I got into the army, there was a Satanist priest in the bungalow. There was a wall in the middle and a lot of beds to the side, a lot of beds to the side. Later, when the Satanist priest came to repentance, he said, when you guys came in on that side, I didn't see anybody. He didn't see anybody. But when we came in that side, that medium, that demonic thing through him, said to him, now your authority field is only on this side of the bungalow. Immediately, immediately, the enemy recognized authority. But if I was like wara wara and thinking, oh, yo, yo, don't worry, you're not restricted to this area. That guy does not know who he is in Christ. That guy is wara he's just focusing on himself and his own needs and his own issues with people. Don't worry. We have authority there because that child of God does not understand his authority. But when we understand our stature and authority, very blessed are you when you get the, get the proof that you are standing with authority. And the proof will be when people start to come against you in the right way. Like we said, may God's grace be on us. Amen. Last one, number nine. Blessed are you when people insult you. When last did you hear somebody saying, oh, I'm so blessed because somebody insulted me. <laughs> insulted you, persecuted you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Oh, who likes it when some, many people, some people talk behind your back? So, sure. may God give us the grace to understand when I came from uh, Pretoria to here, I served there in, uh, in a specific church, but also I worked at the city council. And when I came and I took a week uh, of fasting in, in the December, one of the 20, 30 things God said to me, there will be people that will talk behind your back and spread a lot of things, a lot of me messages. And God said, what are you going to do? Sometimes God would want to prepare you. Hello? And God didn't say, I will deal with them. God didn't say, I will make sure that they don't do it. God said, what are you going to do in the midst of it? Go and sit with God. Wise virgin, get the extra oil. Amen. Amen. Evil because of me. On the one side... You stand as a king with a king of kings with authority, and that's why evil will come against you. Blessed are you, because you stand as a king with a king of kings. On the other side, for his name's sake, you stand as a priest, and you worship God in spite of the circumstance. So as kings and priests that will rule and reign with Christ forever, like Revelation says in 2 Peter, 1 Peter verse chapter 2, so I say to you, may we grow in Christ for this. Now, this is the foundation of the Beatitudes that Jesus gives the audience. And say, this you first need to understand. What does blessing mean? Before we talk about prayer, before we talk about fasting, before we talk about things like what you must do with those who insult you, those who curse you, where the law says this, and then Jesus, but I say unto you. The law says this, but I say unto you. The law says this, but I say unto you. That is chapter 5. And then chapter 6, a different theme. We go with that. Christianity in your practical life. Christianity in your practical life. Jesus in, chapter, in the first chapter, very much getting very practical. But here, what are we talking first about? In how you give yourself. Number one, position yourself in your practical life. How do you position yourself in the midst of needs? There's a lot of need out there. There's a lot of things the children need in the school. There's a lot of challenges. There's a lot of things going on in the houses of many of those kids that you feel 
like a burden in your heart. But here with the first few verses, be careful not to practice your righteousness in front of others. There's a key verse that I want to put out in this first point. Verse 3. When you give to the needy, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. Once we had to do an exam, and one of the guys said, Oh, I have the scripture. He didn't study at all. He said, My left hand does not know what my right hand is doing <laughs> when he had to write the exam. No, not in that context. It talks about you don't take the honor. You focus on Christ and you serve the needy. You serve those who need spiritual breakthrough, those who need physical breakthroughs. We need to be there for one another. The rest of my body was not there for my piece of home. He didn't hop along and went and live in Pofader. It rotten and he died. You won't believe it. But for some reason, sometimes in the church, we don't understand it, that we need one another. It's me and the Lord. That's super spiritual. We need one another. Hello. But that takes some humility and some honesty. May God help you. May God help me in that. In Jesus' name, be careful not to do this to be seen. So the first of all, position in your practical life in a place where God will get all the glory. And it's not for you to be seen. You give yourself and nobody said thank you. You gave yourself for two or three years in the school doing this and this and this. But people just find fault. They just criticize. They just this. Nobody's been there before. Hey, mm, go and say to the others. But what are we saying? It could be so a thing of God purifying your heart that you will really, really, really do this for him so that you can impart that for your children and your grandchildren, even to the kids, because you have that anointing, you have that capacity. What you are, you can impart. So even if they don't say thank you, or oh, don't appreciate what you do, please do it as if unto the Lord. Don't judge them. Don't point the finger. But see, there's a privilege that on earth you can say, in spite of this, still I will. You cannot say that in heaven. You can say it only on earth as an honor. Okay, the next one. Position in the spirit. That's all about prayer. The next one. Once again, he says, do not pray like the hypocrites for they love praying, standing in the synagogues and on the street corners. It's not to be seen by others. Prayer is not, I pray till it changes the circumstances. And then prayer, the trick of prayer. The gimmick of prayer is it works. Prayer is positioning in the spirit. And when it's going very successful with you, you're supposed to pray more. Because that's the point when your heart can be stolen by the success. Like so many examples in the Old Testament with the Israelites. When everything was fine, their hearts drift, drifted away. No. Your heart need to be positioned through prayer. Prayer protects your heart to be in the right place. Amen. And prayer as a positioning before God is an honor where God wants this fellowship with you. This fellowship with you. Yes, and in that context, trust God for breakthroughs, please. God says, let it be known. Speak to me about your needs. Speak to me because I'm your father. And in that way, you honor him as your father. But my brother, my sister, will it, let it not be a trick to get something. So when he talks about prayer, also here, he talks about our Father in heaven. Not the, like the little kid heard, hello, what is your name? No, hello, it be your name. <laughs> Holy is your name. <laughs> Holy is your name. Amen. There's none like you. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. What are we talking about? So many times you will see through the right this whole through this whole chapter. I'm not going to take time because of uh, yeah, for the sake of time, I'm not going to say it. There's about six, seven, eight times that just in this chapter, he talks about your father. Jesus says, "Your father will hear." Go into the closet. Your father will hear. Understand, it's your father. How much you pray, our father. Jesus wants you to understand it's really, it's your Father. Do it with your Father. Let's say it's my Father. My father. Biggest, greatest, amazing, 
place of honor and grace over your life. That it, God is your Father. Amen. That's about prayer and then the fasting also about focus. Fasting to bring the focus in. Don't let everybody know that you are fasting. You know? What a waste. Fasting, so many times, is to bring the focus back and to make sure you have a focus in your prayer and in your worship. You put a discipline over yourself. Okay. Next one. Number three. Position in the priorities of your heart. A key verse that I know you're writing down is verse 21. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The eye of the lamp is the body. If your eyes are healthy, the whole body is full of light. If your eyes are unhealthy, your whole body will be full of darkness. Talking about explaining the whole thing of your treasures. If he says, you store up for yourself treasures in heaven. Where moths and vermin, vermin does not, do not destroy. And where thieves do not break in and steal. Oh, all the treasures in heaven. God, where can I put the gold and the money? I do not understand how to store up treasures in heaven. First of all, what he talked about now. What is blessing all about? How do you speak? How do you forgive? How do you live in the spirit? How do you slay giants so that your children don't have that to slay the giant? You don't deal with the Goliaths. Your children must deal with it. Store up in heaven so that in the generations that treasures can rain down on your children and your grandchildren and their children. That it can rain down on the nations. Because David getting there slay Goliath. And it's a treasure raining, raining down on the nation of God. That they have the guts to go for the Philistines. Because of the victory you brought. Many other Christians can take courage to overcome the enemy. Mr. David. Prefect. Mr. and Miss David. Davidina. Okay. Go and slay that giant. So that the nation, so that the other kids can take courage. Are you with me? Where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Treasures in heaven. There's a lot of prayers from mamas and grandmas. And praise, offerings and declarations from mother and father. And generations that's locked up like a cloud in the heavenlies over you. If you understand how to walk accurately with God on earth, it will be for you as it is in heaven. And that treasure stored up will rain down on you. Do you just understand how to honor? I'm not going to go into that again. I mean, even the, the, the staff, they know their testimony. That to me, this is such an honor. Because my spiritual father, he prayed. He stored up the treasures in heaven. He prayed. He trusted. Like we heard only after we got the, this whole farm. When my late spiritual mother, when she cried and said, my, the prayer of my husband was not in vain. When she told us, and we were shocked, and she told, no, but 30 years ago, Dom for Malta, he and a lot of leases frequently went to the north of Bloemfontein and prayed. God showed them a, a big piece of land for the school, for an old age home even, for a church, for campground, for this, 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 this. It must be there. And they prayed and they walked around and nothing happened. And he died. And she was sobbing, saying, his prayers was not in vain. Because a spiritual son, but through the grace of God that had to honor him in spite of a lot of mistakes, he laughed at a piece of ground, point his finger there, and he received it for 7,000 rand, 215 hectares. Treasures locked up in heaven from a spiritual father that rained down in the next generation. What your child, your grandchild could even laugh about if they understand, respect, and honor your father and your mother, you will inherit the land that God has for you in spite of the mistakes. Put the treasures in heaven. Amen. Where economy is not just boom and the banks crash and eh, crash, crash, <laughs> crash, and everything falls. No, -uh, not anymore. Okay, priorities of your heart. heart position with your heart. Last thing, where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Your heart is going all over the place. My brother, how to settle that heart? You choose the treasure. You choose the treasure. 
Now you say, no, I cannot lie anymore. I'm saying, God, this will happen. This is my heart. On a Sunday, I say, I give you my heart and this. And you feel, ah, how many times did I fall into depression or negativity or this or anxiety, all this stuff in the week. How can I say on a Sunday anymore, Lord, this is my decision. You keep on choosing through the Holy Spirit by faith that treasure. And somewhere this heart will start to get in line with your decision in Christ. Take courage to make sure that you bring your heart in line where you believe your treasure is. Amen. Number four. There's only five. Position in your needs and circumstances. <sighs> there's not a Mosey stress clinic. What is a Mosey in English? Uh, sparrow. There's no Sparrow stress clinic. You knew that? Wow, amazing. God says, your father cares for them. How much more will your father care for you? You have little faith as the crown of creation, as the children of God. Look at the sparrows. Look at the lilies of the field, clothed with glory more than Solomon and all his riches. You can have all the money in the bank, man. You can see more beauty in that lily of the field. Today is there, tomorrow is gone. What is God saying? There's a glory that comes from me that can be on you eternally. Why will you worry about your glory, your beauty, that it's only for one day and phew, tomorrow is gone? But there's an eternal glory, eternal beauty that's coming from me that I'm putting, I'm placing on you. That you learn how to walk in that beauty here on earth. But that beauty will be for eternity. Learn. Let's say, I will learn how to walk in the beauty of God. Let that be so. Start to become to so beautiful words, so the right beautiful attitude, so love, so in, your, in the right way as you serve others. Let it be so in Jesus' name. Look at the fields. Hallelujah. So there's no worry. Hello? Are you there? Um, I'm looking for a scripture. Okay. Verse 25. Therefore, I tell you, do not worry. When he talks about four, about nearly ten verses, just about don't worry. He says, Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or your body, what you will wear. Is life not more than food, but more than clothes. Look at the verse. Okay, but it starts with therefore. That means what is said just before the scripture is very important. And this scripture is just explaining the principle that is the main focus that's in the previous verse. Uh, are you with me? The previous verse is, no one can serve two masters. Either you will hate the one and love the other, or you will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. Who met people in the past? They are just pushing with their business. They are pushing, you see. And if you say, but God will provide, they, yeah, 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 I've heard that. I tried that before. And they even get irritated. I did that. I tried that. But you will just have to do your own thing. Because it doesn't mean God's going to come through for you. God organized <clears throat> divine connection. We went to the Cape. A lot of things happened. But one thing when we came back, we just felt, it just opened up that we will stay at a certain guest house. Um, and on the way back, okay, at this guest house, heard this guy playing guitar. Wow. Start to speak to him about Christ. Sure. He was in the CSphere. I don't know what's that in English, but Christian groups in the, in, the, in the schools. He had a band leading worship, Christian band going to different places. He said, me and God, we don't work anymore. There's no Jesus coming on the clouds. Because of things that happened that he trusted God for. With his own kids. With the thing of a wife just disappearing with his kids and this and this and this. God didn't come through for me. There's no way. Me and God, it's over. He told me straight. And he knows the Bible, in and out. But God's grace was just there. Oh man, oh man, it was such divine connection. And 
I laughed at sometimes when I opened my mouth the things that <laughs> came through that I never thought about it like in that way. But all I'm saying is give yourself out there. And God will direct your steps, my brother. God will direct your steps. But serve him faithfully and go for what he has. Don't focus on your own stuff. Don't focus on what you want. But that guy, he was like, God didn't come through. And he was like a, this hate even, this resentment against that because of what I had to get here. You will start to hate the other one. You will start to resent against the principles of God and start to do your own thing. But it starts in a very small way, very small way. You try to faith thing. You try to confess. You try to, to, to speak forth a lot of scriptures. You had that passion. You try, try to speak to people about Christ and it just didn't have the impact. And you don't speak about Christ anymore because you became some other professional Christian. Not mature Christian, but a professional. And you don't speak to them about Christ anymore. There's not that sowing anymore. There's not that passion just to worship me. There's not that passion. Are you starting to serve Mammon? Because it's either the one or the other one. So I, I can only become, what's low? Lukewarm. Lukewarm in this area if I'm giving myself to something else. So this will go down only if that one is going up. If that one becomes a priority, this is going down as priority. So when you see that type of lukewarmness, that passion is not there anymore to speak about Christ, to lead people to the Lord, to serve others in the name of the Lord, to sow how God wants to challenge you into that. Then you know something is wrong. Somewhere there's another master that is taking more of my priority and my loyalty and my commitment. It's either Mammon or it's God. And when he says that, that principle, you do the one or the others, therefore, don't worry. Look at the birds. Look at this. Look at that. Look at that. Your, 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 your father, he will care for you. Your father will provide for you. But you won't see that. You won't understand it. You will become anxious when things are not working out in the finances and the circumstances. Things are not working out. And you're trusting God for all these things. Don't trust God for all those things. Start at the place where God show me where it was, became more memo on my circumstances that must work out than you. God, please be my God. Because if I know you are my God, I'm so safe in you as my provider. You are the provider. You don't perform as a provider. You are the provider. When I have you, the Lord is my shepherd, therefore I shall not want. Before I say, green pastures and this and that and cup overflow. No, before I say that, I say, I have everything when I have God. Start from that place. Start from a place of provision if you start with Christ. Because then you started with a provider on heaven and earth. The source of provision is living in you. So you go and honor him. And don't use him as ATM in a prayer to get what you need. In Jesus' name, we repent. Amen? Amen. So the last one. Position in your or his kingdom. That scripture we know. We all know. But, after he explained all of this once again. But... If you understand these principles, if you apply these principles, then seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all the rest will follow. But it's not just a scripture standing on its own. Are you with me? God is a God that takes us progressively into truth and progressively takes us in breakthroughs and, and that what he has for our lives. But coming to the place where you can make that decision through God's grace. To say, I will stand for what God says. I will stand for what God says, His kingdom, His righteousness. The rest will follow. I will not try, I will try the kingdom and His righteousness and, and look at His grace and mercy following. Let me just see if this trick works. <laughs> and if it doesn't work, I seek the kingdom, I do this, I have prayer and I have fasting. But if it doesn't work uh, after a month or two, <sighs> what? Principle doesn't work anymore? No, God's word is still the same. God was, is still the same. You put the word in the heart, it will not return void. But the problem is, do you put it in the heart with faith, press down, meditate, make sure it's yours, 
not a trick of a promise, but the word, that the word in itself is precious to you. That the word in itself is the goal, that you hunger for the word, and that then you are filled. Are you with me? You will see 30, 60, 100 fold harvest, but in God's way, in God's definition, it will happen. Seek first the kingdom and his righteousness. Okay, seek what God is saying. When you say seek his kingdom, it means tomorrow, you will not just open your mouth and say what you want. You will first hear what the king is saying. What is the final authority? What is the final authority saying? When you have a company and the CEO must make the final, and you have a discussion of this, we will see what the boss is saying. Because we know the boss must make the final decision. But why would God sometimes in the past, not anymore, it worked like that. I, I, this is the way I see it. And, the, and we get out of the boardroom and we just go and do. But the boss didn't speak yet. The boss didn't make the final decision. The CEO of the company didn't give you the final decision. How, how uh, five brain cells must work with one another with all respect. That guy working in that company, by the third time, CEO calling him in and say, okay, tata, you think that that's the way we work in this place. So go and find another job. So if we need to work in his kingdom, oh, we go, go to heaven, we are children of God. But if we want to become children of the kingdom and inherit the kingdom, become children of the kingdom, enter as a child in the kingdom, hello? Then it must be that if we seek his kingdom, we seek the final say of the boss. We can have a lot of things to say. It's a way that seems right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. This is a way that seems right unto other men, and we're going to do this for God. And Peter says, oh, are we going to, I'm going to do this. I'm going to give my life, but nobody will kill you. And in this way, Jesus looked at him and said, get behind me, Satan. Jesus, I thought that Satan looks differently. I mean, I'm, I'm your loyal, one of your most loyal servants. Three out of the twelve. Yeah, just this other day, you said, on the revelation that Father gave me, on that revelation, you're going to build your church. Uh, Lord, this was just like two chapters ago. And now you tell me, go get behind me, Satan. Ha! No time for offense. Make sure your heart stays with him. <laughs> because, you know, he's not going to say it through thunder. But maybe he could say it through... Now, your wife and your husband will never say, get behind me, Satan. Okay, wrong example. <laughs> That's big trouble. But what... I... Okay, so let's not use an uh, example about a human being saying that to you. But this was face to face. So he had some testing men before that man stood up on Pentecost and spoke and 3,000 came to repentance. Before that day, he had some testing. He had some pruning. He had some things to work through. He had some checking of the heart. He had to fight offense. He had to fight the thing of, I thought I just had the acceptance from God. And just... just Look what happened. He had to work through stuff. But I will stand with the king. I will stand with the king. Whatever the king says, I, that's it. He will seek the kingdom. He will seek the kingdom. May God help you. May God help me. When you are in your circumstances, and even when you see success, remember it's about God. Uh, last example. Actually, in Kimberley also, in the army, in all roads, in it. I don't know what's that in English. Um, in Kimberley and uh, a lot of things happened with a lot of guys, demons out and a lot of stuff and deliverance and people baptized, baptized in the spirit in the army camp and oh man and then the chef's bungalow they called me and said Germany must go there, they want to see you um, and the guy said but be careful Germany my nickname at that stage I said no, everything fine Brr, things happened you know a lot of nice things. Came there. There's one guy, double my size, but more the muscle type. But in that sense, he grabbed me and put me down. He said, what rubbish you bring in this bungalow? And he starts swearing, you know, those sentences with more swear words than other words. And he went on and he went on and he went on. And the other guys mocked and this and this and this. And uh, at one stage, he said, you bring all these demons here. Because a lot of guys got demonic dreams. After a lot of guys came to repentance, they had some ha, -ha relationships with some of these guys. And these guys started to get demonic dreams. He said, you bring these demons. 
And I, I just said, no, you doing this and this and this. And because of that, all the demons came in. And the guy took me. <clears throat> I thought I'm going to heaven. But, uh, <laughs> and he did nothing. And then God said, I didn't tell you to speak. God must have the final say. Seek the kingdom. Not seek the right thing to say. Seek what the king says, what you must say, and when you must say it, and how you must say it. That was the wrong time. He praised God for his grace that the guy didn't. And they went on, they went on, and then they started to swear at Christ and very, a lot of rubbish. And I just felt a release. And I said, you know, you're the biggest great bunch of fools that I've ever seen in my life. Jesus comes now, you're all going to burn in hell. No, I could say that. You don't say that to people. But the last days, the, there are about 15 sitting in front of me, all laughing with the most sick things that they said about Jesus. And I said, but what a lot of fools. You know why you are fools? Because you take yourself there. Because Jesus died for you so that you can understand how precious you are and how he wants you with him. And suddenly, everybody was just quiet. And just the presence of God came. And we spoke for another hour and a half. So half past 12, nearly one o'clock, uh, go back to the bungalow, four o'clock, it's inspection in the army, you know. Woo! Next evening, call me again. I said, no, I cannot go again. Came there, this guy that grabbed me and put me down. He said, do you There's 12 of us, we want to make right with Jesus. Um, I got a room for you. I will send them in one by one. You do your thing. He does not know what, what <laughs> he knew nothing about Christianity. You do your thing with them. And lastly, I'm going to come in. He organized the whole campaign. This guy that swear at me and that wanted to grab me the previous night. But all I want to say, ask what God wants to do. And even if they mock you, even at that point, that I had a thousand times that I wanted to say something thousand times that I felt so in a certain sense belittled in a wrong way and uh, I encourage you trust God and when you come into situations where things come against you just know there somewhere is opportunity in it somewhere there's going to be an opportunity and God will help you thank you father for who you are what you do oh God I pray for every man woman young man young woman in this place that we will stand with you, that we will stand with that what you have for our lives, Lord, please. I pray for your grace, your enablement, your, your favor on our lives, Lord. Your mercy, your practical help. We need you, Lord. Forgive us for doing our own thing. Forgive us for flirting with our heart to throw it out there for, for fear or anxiety or disappointment or negativity or depression or whatever. We will not throw our hearts around anymore. Because you died so that you can bring our hearts into a place to be precious, to be precious in your sight. Help us to respect what you are doing in our lives, Lord, and to walk with that integrity. Give us your definition of blessing, blessing, happiness, fulfillment. Help us to understand that from your word, Lord, as we choose to walk with you into eternity, even today. I pray for every man, woman in this place that feel anxiety anxiety and depression or negativities is suffocating them god i pray that you'll bring a release please please lord give her give a release bring a release we trust you for that in jesus name god even i pray for all the staff in the school lord where they're definitely not working there for the money but god they are sowing and they are giving their lives in a calling in a, in a facet of calling, in a statue of calling. God, I pray for a 30, 60, 100 fold harvest in how they give themselves, give themselves, and that they will always do it as if unto you, Lord. I thank you, Lord, that your grace will be upon us all. So we pray in Jesus' name and all say, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah.